All right, just about ready to begin the second half just a few moments ago. You see Sarah Marchman in the middle there. Elected the homecoming queen 2011. She is the treasurer of the Interact Club, senior beta, FBLA, peer leadership, a mentor at Mountain Vernon Elementary School, a Renaissance card holder. Been a counselor at YMCA Camp High Harbor for the past three years. Member of the St. Francis Anglican Catholic Church. Enjoys Friday night football, Saturdays in Athens shopping, hanging out with friends and working with pro therapy. Sarah plans to attend college to pursue a career in dentistry. The others there with her were Aaron Allison, Lauren Jackson, Madeline Chiarella, and Mackenzie Bell. There's our officiating crew breaking away. William, very quickly our officials for this game again. Referee is Scott Tipton, our umpire Scott McQueen, our head lineman, linesman is Brian Mullins, line judge is Brett Hurst, field judge Steve Caudell, side judge Will Sutton, and the clock operator Jason Greathouse. And that's the Lanier Football Officials Association. Modesto Cruz to kick it away. He's been kicking it to the up guys so far. Austin Flanagan and I think that was Murner up there with him before. And let's see if Cruz tries to take him deep or just punches it again like he's been doing. And it's a punch. Punch to the other side though. Murner got it that time. And he's going to be wrapped up immediately, closing very quickly on the kick coverage. First man to hit him was David Epps, number 58. By the way, my compliments to the chef and whoever brought those brownies in here for halftime. About the best brownies I've had in a long time. I don't know if I'd say ever, but it's, it's up there. They were good. Line of scrimmage at the 27. And the War Eagles will try to get a little something going here. And it is still going to be Wyatt Burgess as they slowly tear the press box down around us back here. I have no idea what that was for. Burgess in relief of DeGraff almost has it picked off by Smith. William, that's about, that's about three almost picks for Andrew Smith. Well, they'll be thinking about that tonight. Second and 10 War Eagles at the 27. I got a feeling one more touchdown, one more offensive series, and you're going to see a whole different set of folks. Well, Monty Cross is in there playing defense in addition to 200 and something yards of offense and three touchdowns. That's a behind the line screen to Brandon Thompson who tries to turn the corner over there. Smith's over there to knock him down along with Taylor Ryder. He's going to pick up about five, third and five. Eleven twenty-three to play in the third. Second half just underway. Gary Glenn, William Howick, and Gina Gailey here with you, and it's a family affair tonight. A lot of folks with their kids in attendance. Of course, it is homecoming, but most of these folks are not all on the here. And on the snap, flags fly. Of course, William did teach here at North Hall for a while. And 16 years. Jimmy Giles did go to school here for a little while. And Gina's sister-in-law teaches here now. And Gina's sister-in-law teaches here now. Gina's got her oldest daughter with her, Caitlin. Williams got Natalie and Alex both with him tonight. I'm here by myself. That's all right. Yeah, my kids are grown men now. In any event, becomes third and ten for the War Eagles. This is sort of big. Burgess to throw. Nice screen over here to Brandon Thompson. North Hall diagnoses it pretty well, though. They closed very, very quickly over there. He got a bad spot. He picked up more than that. They only gave him about four. It's going to bring up fourth and five. Yes, 
And once again, Michael Heron to punt it. This time, Heron punts it away. And that is going to be Jones. Jones down the sideline. Going to be knocked out of bounds by the punter. <coughs> the punter knocked him down the bounds. About a 28-yard punt. No. About a 25-yard return? Something like that. Down to the 30. All right. Jones caught that thing on the fly and just took off. Justin Jones, the senior returner. Cross still in the game. I, I see this is the last hurrah here. Caleb Faulkner following the block of Amani Cross deep into the secondary of the War Eagles. Austin Holcomb in on the stop along with Tommy McCormick. Another first down for Amani Cross. Faulkner. I mean, uh, to, to Faulkner. He's had a few first down runs too, hadn't he? Oh, yeah. Cross was kind of fooling us there. He was leading the way. He was the blocking back that time for Faulkner. Let's see if Caleb returns the favor. Nope, they're going to just give it to Faulkner again. He's slanting in it over the left side guard. And he's going to bang it down inside the 15. Picked up about five yards on that. Austin Kinsey in on that play. He got uh, four, almost, almost six yards to go. Line of scrimmage is the 13. Second and six. Cross was moving. Let's see if they don't call it. Faulkner is going to fumble the ball. It's going to be recovered by Chester T. On the one, maybe two. Are they going to say he's down? Let's see. Faulkner had it. Let's see if he's going to be down by the ground. Of course, the ground can't cause a fumble these days. Down by contact. No fumble. It will be first and goal at the six. Etris. Is he still in there at safety? No. Nope. Coming to the game for North Hall. It's Cody Fowler. And they give it to Faulkner, who's going to be stuffed at the five. Or Eagle defense has risen to the occasion. He had about six or seven maroon hats on that ball. Number 56, Bennett leading the way. But they had a bunch of them in there with him. They might have, uh, let's just call it, they're going to call it no gain. Not a loss, but no gain either. First and goal, second and goal to go now from the six. No gain for the Trojans on that play. Looks like they're trying to get Faulkner a touchdown. I think that's, that's that was the plan. Split backfield, it's Imani Cross and Caleb Faulkner. And now they're going to have to have a, an equipment adjustment here. Something's a matter, 50 going in for 51. Cam Howell coming out and Nick Bowen coming in. Second and goal to go from the six, already 28-0. Noel Hall. Brown gets the snap, gets it to Faulkner. Caleb spins into the end zone, touchdown. Caleb Faulkner. So Caleb Faulkner makes it 34 to nothing. And Modesto Cruz will try to tack on another extra point. That is Faulkner's second touchdown of the night. He had a seven yard plunge earlier in the game. And there you see him spinning in the end zone. Nobody could really wrap him up, will you? No, he had a pretty good block in there on the line there for the Trojans. And the extra point by Modesto Cruz. He's five for five, and it's 35 to nothing. We're back in a moment, the Hall County Sports Game of the Week.
If you're tired of paying high prices, go on down and visit the good folks at Dave's Goody Barn. The buyers for the store travel the globe, searching for the greatest deals so the savings can be passed along to you. They purchase from insurance companies due to fires, floods, and other natural disasters. Most of this merchandise is in near perfect condition. So if you're tired of paying high prices, hurry on down to Dave's Goody Barn or visit their website at davesgoodybarn.com. What's there today may be gone tomorrow. Hey, sorry I'm late. Oh, it's okay. Ashley just told me she might have an STD, but she doesn't know what to do about it. Eric told me he went to the Gainesville Care Center to be tested. I thought they just did pregnancy tests. Oh no, not only that. They test for uh, gonorrhea, chlamydia, HIV, and herpes. I'm gonna leave and help with the treatment. But the best part is it's free and confidential. She'll be so relieved to know what to do. Thanks. Sure. Hi, I'm Mitzi, nurse manager for the Gainesville Care Center. Chlamydia is the most common bacterial STD and the leading cause of sterility. Most people with chlamydia don't know they have it. Gonorrhea is another bacterial STD that has high infection rates in teens. Herpes and HIV are with you for life, but it's important to know so that you can get ongoing help from your doctor. Teens are at a high risk for any STD. Our testing is by urine or finger prick. We're confidential and we care. Call our 24-hour helpline for an appointment. Oh, you see them there at the brickyard. Got their hands in the air. But they just do care about their Trojans here at the brickyard. See Modesto Cruz gonna kick it away. But he's been kicking it pretty short. And he's gonna kick it short again. This time goes to Murner again at the 30. Murner's gonna be hit pretty hard by Wade Phillips and also on the kick coverage team. Number 48, Destin Bennett. First and 10, War Eagles. Let's see, got a man down. Can't tell if that's Can't 32 really or not. Who, don't know who that is right now. Going to be helped up though. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a few moments. The Hall County Sports Game of the Week. Your one-stop spot for complete auto repair is the Auto Works shop on Sprout Springs Road. On everything from oil changes to brakes, new and used tires and tune-ups, even the big jobs like transmissions, the specialists at the Auto Works can have you up and running just like that. We talk about value. The Auto Works will not be undersold on used tires or any locally priced repair job. Ask about special discounts for students and teachers with your ID. That's the Auto Works at 6671 Spout Springs Road, just past Flowery Branch High and Spout Springs Elementary Schools. Phone 770-967-1732. Finally, a real gym in town for everybody. From folks just wanting to get in shape to world-class powerlifters and bodybuilders, Iron Beast Barbell features elite trainers from MMA, Strongman, general fitness and weight loss, to cross training, sports specific, wrestling, even professional sports massage and wellness. Iron Beast Barbell, a 12,000 square foot facility with 24 seven access and no contracts. Home of the national champion Georgia Iron Dogs and national level bodybuilder Cheryl Cook. Voted gym of the month by bodybuilding.com. Iron Beast Barbell, located in the Gainesville Market Center behind Arby's and Chick-fil-A, 622 Shallowford Road, Gainesville. All right, William, we've still got a, a crowd gathered around the young man over there, and I really can't see who it is yet. I'll try to help him up here in just a minute, I think. There we go. Is it 32 or 32? The injured young man is number 32, which is Andrew Irwin, a junior. On the kick coverage team, we'll see the War Eagles back on offense. So far, they have been shut out. 35 0. North Hall on top. We may be starting to see some 
people toward the end of this period, certainly in the fourth period, in North Hall, I would expect them to be doing something. They go a direct snap to Quan Clark, who's got some room, and look at Quan down the sidelines. Look at Quan Clark go. Quan Clark is going to score a touchdown. 68 yards. Well, boom, just like that. I don't see any flags. I do see another man down across the field. Noel Hall's going to, it's just somebody getting up slow. Juan Clark just took off. Look at this, William. Here's the replay. He just made a man miss right there. Another one, two, three missed. And then he just outruns everybody. Look, Gilmer's got the angle on him right there, but he just outruns the angle. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. Over there by Michael Heron. So 35 to 7. Well, Chester T is just cut into the lead just like that. On a 68-yard touchdown scamper by Quan Clark, number five. We're back in a moment. A Hall County Sports Television Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the new pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. And one of the things I've noticed here in Hall County is the number of churches that are here, and that is a great blessing. But it can also be a problem if you're trying to find a new church or you're investigating Christianity for the first time. There's so many churches and it seems like there's so little time. Well, we invite you to be our guest at McEver Road United Methodist. We will not give you a high pressure approach. You can come in, make up your own mind at one of three of our worship services. We have three diverse worship services, one at 830, which is a gospel format service. We have a 10 o'clock service, which is not contemporary. Uh, but it's uh, something more edgy and different, and we'd like to invite you to that if that's your style. And then at 11 o'clock, we have a traditional Methodist service. So we'd love for you to come be our cast and uh, come and see. Are you getting married soon? Or do you know someone who is? The most wonderful present that you can give a loved one or friend is a wedding memory keepsake on video that captures all of the excitement of that special day and that can be treasured year after year. The folks at North Georgia Productions are experts in wedding photography and videography. Their job is to capture all of the beauty of your wedding day as seen through your eyes. There is nothing more disappointing than a poor quality video of the most important day of your life. Don't let that happen. Call the professionals at North Georgia Productions. You can be assured that your wedding day will be captured on video just the way you dreamed it. Call 770-297-0528 or email weddings at northgeorgiaproductions.com. Michael Heron, who just tacked on an extra point, getting ready to kick it away for Chester T. We don't know what's the matter with Leo Molina. Molina usually puts him in the end zone. Might have got hurt on the first kickoff of the game. Haven't seen him for a while. Short kick is going to get away from Eli Gilmer. He's going to get it back and return it out to about the 15. And it'll be Trojans ball. First and 10 from their own 15. Pretty good job by the Chester T. Kick covering team at that time. Well, I was going to say you're going to see some new faces in there, but after that touchdown, uh, they're going to have to go back with their starters. Yep. All right. And the Chester T. crowd found them something to cheer about on that particular long run by Quan Clark. They just went to the direct snap. The Wildcat formation is very popular now, as they call it. Now, what they're in now. Monty Cross is in the Wildcat. Direct snap to him. And they held him up there. Yeah, Amani got stacked up at the line of scrimmage. 
by Khalil Cantrell and some of the rest as they unpilot. He got a yard, second and nine. Yeah, they're calling out stuff people people need to leave here. And I tell you what, they, they are packed in here, and they're all parked up and down the road out there and in every conceivable parking spot. Big, huge capacity crowd at the, at the Brickyard tonight. Bradley Brown now goes back under center. This time he hands off to Imani Cross as they unpilot. Nope, that was Faulkner. Check it. Caleb Faulkner got the call. They got a couple. Third and seven. Line of scrimmage is the 18. Clock moves here in the third. This would be the first three and out if they stopped them. They did punt one other time. They punted, but it wasn't a three and out. Monty and it's Cross. not going to be a three and out now, is it? No, I don't think so. I think Imani Cross with Khalil Cantrell on his back got the first down. Yep. He got it by half a yard. They just put it on Big Cross's back, literally, that time, and he toted the mail and toted Cantrell as well. Another, another scrimmage, now the 36. Make it another, to 26. Another first down. That's three in this half already. And just he had the blitz on, and Cross is going to beat it. Money Cross to the 35. He got close to another 10 yards. Nine yards on that one. He's averaging pretty close to 20 yards a carry. Wish I'd have brought my jacket with me. It has turned chilly. He's averaging over 20 yards a carry. He had 11 carries in the first half for 238 yards. Second and nine, uh, second and one after the nine-yard gain by Cross. Chester T's been in that 4-4 defense. Now they're going to get him for encroachment. They start out in a 4-4, but then they do a lot of stunning out of it, Chester T. First down on penalty. That's yep. the first one of those tonight. The rest have been on rushes. Line of scrimmage is the 40. Will Hall 60 yards away from more points. And Imani Cross with good balance. Nope, popped up. And look at that. P.J. White. P.J. White's going to score. Got a 40-yard return. 40-yard return on the punt. We'll see if we can get a replay and see exactly what happened. But P.J. White is going to score. There is a flag. Uh, surely not. Yeah, let's see this. Surely nobody blocked. Well, let's find out what the conference is about. Cross had it. The ball just popped out right into P.J. White's hand. Now, surely nobody would have blocked on this. Well, Cody Eats was trying to give him some run support there, but P.J. just took off for the end zone. I know his daddy, Paul, is pretty happy with that, but they're going to bring this one back? How far are they bringing it back? My God. To the 34. Well, wipe out the score. It is going to be Chester T. Ball. But they take the score away from P.J. And it will be War Eagle ball at the 34 of North Hall. A face mask, not a block in the back or an illegal block, but a face mask, we understand, is the call. 35-7. This way it stays. No score for now for the War Eagles. Look, they still got, uh, they're going to go with Quan Clark in the gun. Well, we're going to call this the Wildcat. And anyway, he's the only back back there. The Wild War Eagle. 
and he gets away from a couple of tacklers. He's pretty he fumbled shifty. Fumbled the football. Yeah, it looks like the ball popped out. All that for no gain, but he fumbled the football, and North Hall's got it. North Hall comes up with it, so they just swap turnovers. Looks like they're going to give the defensive end, the big junior, Eric Gonter, number five, credit for recovering that ball. So let me just swap my spotting sheets back over. And all of that was a lot of noise. It was exciting, but it amounted for very little as they exchange turnovers. Again, North Hall trying to go to two and three and go to White County to play the Warriors next week. And Chester T. White County was losing. Chester T was three and one coming in, and this is a pass to Faulkner. Faulkner going to be ridden out of bounds and fumbles as he goes out of bounds by Tommy McCormick. But Bradley Brown, I told you they showed last week against Walnut Grove, they can throw it a little bit. They kind of lull you to sleep. They go with a big pounding attack of Faulkner and Cross, and that was a nice pass to Faulkner, and it's going to net on first down at the 36, a 30-yard pass down to the 36. Jones wide to the left. It's Gilmer, the wing to the right. Split backfield is Cross and Faulkner. Fa Cross is the blocking back for Faulkner, who rolls his way into the secondary before he is going to be Tackle back there by Zach Cheshire and Brandon Miller. Faulkner carried the ball? Yes, he did. Down to the 28. Well, William, if they, uh, if they score here, it's a mandatory running clock in the fourth, isn't it? Yes. They're up by 28 right now. And we're going to have a timeout. Timeout, timeout call. Chester T. Chester T. 320 to play in the third. 35-7 North Hall. We're back in a moment with the Hall County Sports Game of the Week. At Gainesville State College, students can engage in a challenging learning experience in a supportive and nurturing environment. With a vision to be recognized as the region's premier teaching institution, GSC promotes academic freedom and scholarship in a caring, collegial, and fun environment. At GSC, you will receive the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to help you be successful in your academics, as well as build strong foundations for life. Gainesville State College, student-focused, learning-centered. Visit us on the web at www.gsc.edu. Mountain View Auto Repair is your local full-service auto repair shop. Trusted with your vehicles for over 20 years, our experience will ensure that your vehicle will stay well-maintained year-round. Mountain View Auto Repair is the place to bring your vehicle. They'll always treat you right, the service is good, and the prices are very reasonable. You can trust our experts in everything from transmissions to brakes to engine repairs and oil changes. My wife and I bring our cars to Mountain View Auto Repair because they're honest, they do good work, and their prices are reasonable. So visit owner Danny Hammock and his staff of professionals at 3365 Mountain View Road in Gainesville. Or give them a call at 770-535-7278. That's Mountain View Auto Repair for your complete auto service. All right, you see there, some of the people with their homecoming, there's one girl with her homecoming dress still on. I imagine that's pretty chilly out there. All kinds of folks. Some got their shorts and they found them a jacket, a coat to go on with the shorts. Cheerleaders, they got smart. They got the leggings and all on now. Oh, yeah. They got plenty to cheer about tonight. And the Trojans seem to have hit their stride the last couple of games after those three brutal losses on the road. Bradley Brown rides it down to Faulkner, who's going to bang it over the 25. He's going to be another first down. Faulkner's a tough, gutty running back. Caleb Faulkner, uh, Jr. Cody Humphreys, one of the first guys to hit him for the War Eagles. First and 10 Trojans at the 25. Bradley Brown, left-handed quarterback, airs it out. Did he catch it, Gilmer? Eli Gilmer, touchdown! There wasn't a referee close by. 
Yeah, we had to wait and see what they said. And then Gilmore raised his hand and said, yeah, I got this ball. I got it. So Noel Hall strikes through the air. 25 yards. Here it is. Look at it. Lays it right in there perfectly. The left-handed quarterback just swings it out there. 25-yard pass. Bradley Brown to Eli Gilmer. Cruz puts it up, and he is good. And he is six for six. And we're back in a moment. The Hall County Sports Game of the Week. Smith's Cleaning of South Hall has many services to offer businesses throughout Hall County and the surrounding areas. No matter how small or how large your projects are, we can help. Smith's Cleaning of South Hall has two large industrial writing scrubbers that are available to clean manufacturing and or warehouse floors. Call Smith's Cleaning of South Hall at 770-531-1533 for a free estimate. I'm Pastor Maddox with World Redeeming Ministries, Senior Pastor. And I just want to let you know that if you would just want to come out to a great fellowship where people are great people and have great fun and fellowship in Christ, then I just believe that this is the place for you. So I'm inviting you to have an opportunity just to come to set in and listen to the word where it's being preached with simplicity, where it's being preached with clarity, but most of all, understanding. And I want to tell you this, your life will never be the same again. Gary Glenn, William Howington back here with you as Cruz tacks on yet another extra point. And the Brickyard is rocking tonight. These games brought to you in part by Dave's Goody Barn, the car store, Long Street Cafe, Gainesville State College, Gainesville Care Center, Iron Beast Barbell, Auto Works Garage, McEver Road, United Methodist Church, Metal Roofing Sales, Mountain View Auto Repair, Rucksack Military Surplus, The Lion's Den, Conditioned Air Systems, Applied Images in Gainesville White Print, J. Guy Advertising in the Trophy Case, Precision Pressure Wash and Painting, Georgia Trophy and Awards, and Dr. Brad Dixon, Dennis. We thank them all. Another short kick taken at about the 28 by one of the upbacks for the War Eagles. And as they wrestle him to the ground, they unpile it. It'll be Bennett on the hit, and it was number 10, A.J. Siaya. <laughs> we will call him CJ, but I don't think that's the way. But I think it's pronounced it. Sihaya. AJ Sihaya, number 10 for Chester T. It just sounded good when we said AJ CJ, did it? William? Yes. <laughs> 38. That's where they spot it. Got a man split wide to the right and twins to the left. Wyatt Burgess is going to throw a screen over there, and he throws it over everybody's head. Going to be a way too tall for Quan Clark to draw it in. 42-7. Now, if it stays this way when the fourth period starts, those incomplete passes will not stop the clock. Mandatory running clock with a 30-point lead in the fourth quarter. I wouldn't mind seeing something like that in college and the pros, will you? It never happened in professional football. It might in college. Man in motion. And off to Thompson, who's going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And knocked way back. True love hit him first. I think it was Andrew Smith who also hit him, too. Got a yard and a half. Third and a long eight. At this point, Chester D just trying to work on something because they're gonna, they may have to have a brand-new quarterback for the rest of the year. The graph could not put any weight at all on that knee when they took him out toward the end of the first quarter. Burgess, he hit a man in stride, and that is going to be to Kelly Arthur, and it's going to be a good for a first down for the War Eagles. Picked up 10 yards. Inside of two minutes now to play. 
And they are at the 49 of North Hall, first and 10 War Eagles. Once again, Chester T will be hosting Stevens County next week. North Hall plays at White County. We are in Oakwood for Johnson at West Hall. The Battle of Oakwood. Hike to Burgess in the gun. Tucks and runs. Knocked out of bounds by Ryder across the way. And they got 91 seconds left to play in the period. Let's see where they spot it. Gonna bring it back. Just inside the 46. Second and almost seven. Not quite three yards there, just about four. Burgess, screen pass to Thompson. Thompson cuts back to the middle, picks up a blocker. Look at Brandon Thompson. And Andrew Smith is going to grab him at the 10. He's going to fall forward to about the 8. 35 yards. Smith saved the touchdown with 80 seconds to play in the period. First and goal for the War Eagles now at the 9. Stan Luttrell's got to be happy the way his kids are standing in there and fighting. He certainly wishes the score were a little closer, but the effort has not diminished. First and goal, isn't it? First yeah. and goal from the nine. Yes, sir, e Bob. Well, it'd be nice if I could get a touchdown in here. Just as a consolation prize, I guess. Snap goes to Clark. He wants to run it in. Imani Cross and Cross and True Love. Imani Cross and Dylan True Love in on that stop. Did he get a yard or uh, nope, no game. Second and goal from the nine. 35, 34, 33 seconds, 32, 31, 30. And and Burgess wants to throw, and he is going to be knocked down as he tries to stumble forward. Lost be, a yard. Um, Chappelle, Patrick Chappelle. The first guy to hit him for a yard loss. Seven seconds, six, and that's going to end the quarter. 42-7, North Hall on top. We've got a quarter to play at the Brickyard, the Hall County Sports Game of the Week. At Gainesville State College, students can engage in a challenging learning experience in a supportive and nurturing environment. With a vision to be recognized as the region's premier teaching institution, GSC promotes academic freedom and scholarship in a caring, collegial, and fun environment. At GSC, you will receive the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to help you be successful in your academics, as well as build strong foundations for life. Gainesville State College, student-focused, learning-centered. Visit us on the web at www.gsc.edu. There are hundreds of options when choosing apparel or promotional items at Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. We're all about quality and competitive pricing. Sports items are in stock. Look for special pricing on letterman jackets, corporate apparel, corporate gifts, and custom embroidery. All local high schools should check out the line of spirit wear and trophies. We're also offering custom screen printing available for any team sport. Be on the winning side when you choose Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. Locally owned and operated at 250 Dawsonville Highway, Gainesville. Call 770-718-0062 or on the web at jgeyer.com and trophycaseltd.com. Some of the Chester T coaches up top trying to scramble around William and get a little something going. Chester T band across the way. And they got a big band. They're proud of the War Eagles. Yeah, they do a fine job. Yeah, they do. Once again, congratulations to Sarah Marchman, homecoming queen, 2011 here, crowned at halftime. Now, if they don't score here, the clock will run here in the fourth period. Burgess and Thompson are back there in the backfield. We've got twins each way, and Burgess wants to throw, throws it in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. He hit him at the fingertips. Might have try to get it in there just a little too hard. Couldn't hang on. 
intended for Nathaniel Peck. Fourth and goal to go. Fourth and goal to go from the 10. Burgess get another shot at it. Throws it across the middle, in and out of the hands of Peck once again, but there is going to be a flag on the play. Well, I guess we got the pass interference in the end zone. I think you're right. So the ball will be down at the five. First and goal. First and goal. Half the distance. So they'll get four more cracks at it. 42 to seven. Now the clock will run. Quan Clark and Thompson in the backfield back there with Burgess. Clark in motion. And Burgess hands off to Thompson, who's brought up at about the four. Second and goal. Yeah, let's see. Did he oh. get to the five? Well, no game. No game. Didn't lose any, but didn't gain any either. Thought maybe he'd gotten to the four, but they backed it up and put it back down on the five. Burgess to throw across the middle and picked off by Imani Cross. Cross is going to take it out of the end zone. Cross is going to get out to about the 18 or 19, and Imani Cross. As if he needed to do anything else tonight, staves off the touchdown drive. Well, I'm telling you what, now it's time for him to sit down. I think so too. And Monty Cross got him out exactly to the 26. You know, William, he actually gained six more yards than if he'd have took a knee. Look at this, here's the interception. He's got some uh, people running interference for him out there, too. And now the clock will run. Bradley Brown is going to give it to Cross, who cuts back to the middle of the field, spins. Mm. And that was a tackle by Kyle Perry, the middle linebacker, and, he, and his leg got bent at a little bit of a funny angle. So, surely now. And there you go. Imani Cross comes out. And Cody Fowler comes in. And, he, and Cross gets a hand from the Trojan crowd. And we may have seen the last of Imani Cross tonight. Surely we have. Player of the game. Yeah, player of the game. Offense, defense. What else does he need to do? And look at here. Kevin Christmas running the ball, lowered his shoulder, and we've got a flag on the play. Flag down at the 40. White, P.J. took him down. And the flag is out there laying at about the 39. Christmas See, there it picked is. up 20. I don't know if this is going to be personal foul. Just to take. So it's going to be 20 yards for Christmas. Christmas in September. Mm. The last day. Can you believe that this month is gone? It's turned around. All the way down now is where they spot it. It'll be first and 10 for the Trojans at the 17. Time to see. Time to start spotting off of the rosters now. I have a feeling. Although Brown is still the quarterback. And they give it to Faulkner. He's going to be dragged down at about the five. And it's going to be number 19 on the tackle for that time, Tommy McCormick. A junior roverback. Uh, they don't back it up. They don't give him to the five. They only give him to the seven.
second and goal for the Trojans. Got nine yards on that. Faulkner's yardage is starting to mount up. And it's Christmas. He's going to be tackled by McCormick again, but the first guy to hit him was Austin Tullis. Did he get to the five that time? Let's see. Nope. Got to the six. Got a yard. So now it becomes, well, I guess they got the first down, didn't they, William? Yeah. First down now, first and goal to go from the six. So he did have enough for the first down. No gain there. That's 48 carrying the ball now. He's on pilot. Are they going to let Bennett carry it? Destin Bennett <laughs> on the carry. Lost a yard. Second and goal to go from just inside the eight. Brown directing traffic. And hands to Christmas. He's going to be grabbed by Austin Holcomb, the junior outside linebacker. Third and goal to go. He got to the five. Third and goal to go from the five for the Trojans. Clock continues to move. Even if you would go out of bounds, it's still running now. That would stop if they score. Timeouts, change of possession, scores. You're right. Bradley Brown throwing into the end zone. Touchdown. It was caught. Caught by Caleb Faulkner. Five-yard touchdown pass from Brown to Caleb Faulkner. Brown's second touchdown of the night. Faulkner, second touchdown. Third touchdown. Yep, second for Brown throwing, and Faulkner's third, right. first receiving. That's correct. There's too much scoring. We can't keep up with it. I'm out of room. I've got one more line left. Let's see, Cruz will try to go seven for seven. Nope. This one is off to the left. I jinxed him. 48 to 7. As Cruz was no good. We're back in a moment. Hall County Sports Game of the Week. If you're tired of paying high prices, go on down and visit the good folks at Dave's Goody Barn. The buyers for the store travel the globe searching for the greatest deals so the savings can be passed along to you. They purchase from insurance companies due to fires, floods, and other natural disasters. Most of this merchandise is in near perfect condition. So if you're tired of paying high prices, hurry on down to Dave's Goody Barn or visit their website at davesgoodybarn.com. What's there today may be gone tomorrow. If you are looking for a quality used car, then look no further than the car store on McKever Road between Gainesville and Buford. You won't find clunkers or junkers at the car store, just vehicles you'll be proud to own. At the car store, they can finance you on the spot, no matter what your credit is. They have a variety of plans. You can even phone your payments in. At the car store, they've been giving outstanding service to the community for over 20 years. At the car store, everybody rides. Come on down to the car store. We can make you happy. My name's Bob Watson, and I guarantee it. All righty, William, there you are. They got the flags out here at the Brickyard now. <laughs> I think I'd have to wrap up in one of those flags as cold as it is. Well, I was out on the field before the game, and I could feel that wind stirring and temperature starting to drop, and I was looking around for Coach Bob Christmas to talk to him prior to the game. They said he went to put on his coat. I came out, he didn't have a coat on, but he had on some long sleeves and had a shirt on over that and a hat. I see he's got his coat on now, though. Exchanging a hug on the sidelines down there. You see Caleb Faulkner. Coach Christmas was exchanging a hug with Imani Cross. 
Faulkner's third touchdown of the night, his first receiving. Brown has thrown two touchdown passes. Imani Cross has got three touchdowns running. All of those came in the first half. And then Cross continued to run the ball some in the, in the second half as they do a little squibber down there. And one of the War Eagles is going to have to jump on top of it, number 53, Danny Mejia. So the War Eagles will put it in play at their 33. Number 85, Modesto Cruz there, kind of squibbed that one on down the field. Let's see, they'll bring Burgess back out. They're going to have to get him some work, William. He may be the man the rest of the way. I think that's Sihaya in the backfield with him now. They're missing the man. Here he comes. And the big lineman. Austin Edmonds coming out. And they give it to Sahaya. He's going to be tackled by Fowler. Fowler and Epps on the stop. Brings up second and a long seven. Line of scrimmage is just across 35. Burgess gets the snap. Sahaya is going to be mobbed in the backfield. Got, got no chance. Lose the two he just gained. Hitting him first was big number 74, Jay Abair. Hey Bear, one of the team captains, wasn't he, wasn't William? Yes, I think so. Hey Bear gets his name in the stat chart, too. Probably already had it in there. It's just the first time we. Third and nine, yep. Might have had an assist or two. Burgess fakes, now throws. Overthrows his man and putting a hand on it back there for the Trojans is Wade Phillips. Intended for Peck. It turned, suddenly turned around and had to be a defensive guy. It's fourth down now for the War Eagles, and the clock continues to roll. And it will stop on the change of possession as we see Smith back there. Line of scrimmage, the 33. Michael Heron on the punt. Andrew Peck at the 34. 33-yard point. 33, 32-yard punt, depending on where they spot it. 33-yard punt. Spotted at 34. First and 10 Trojans. And I would think we will see the ground control offense out here and... Maybe try to pound out a first down or two and then be done with it. Got another quarterback in. Got another is that quarterback. 37? Yep, that is. Avery Cagle. So Cagle in as quarterback and immediately the Trojans are knocked backwards. 47 carried the ball, is that right? Brandon Dyer. 47 will be Brandon Dyer. Loses three. Second and 13. New Trojan offensive line members. A lot of new faces in there for the Trojans now. A lot of new numbers. Cagle hands off. Trying to see who we got at the bottom of the pile. 44. 44. I don't have a 44 on my roster. And we don't have a 44 on our roster. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Smiley just said the same thing. Third down. We have no idea who 44 is. Lincoln Hewitt now. They say that's Lincoln Hewitt, 44. 
Third and 14. They're losing every bit of the clock. They'll turn Cagle loose, counting it down. And Cagle takes off on the quarterback keeper, and look at him go. He gets it all over there. P.J. White's going to tackle him. He got back to the original line of scrimmage and then some, but it's going to be shy of the first down by about seven yards, fourth and seven. 49, 48 seconds. You know, the Trojans may just run this thing all the way down and then take a penalty, William, and then punt it. Let's see. 34 seconds, 33, 32. Kego letting it go all the way down on fourth and seven at the 37. 18, 17. And there's the delay of game. With 12 seconds left to play, they'll back it up. And now they may just run around. Are they going to try to do that or are they going to punt it? I think they're going to run around. Run around for about 12 seconds and kill the clock. Fourth and 12. As number 25, Caleb Parrish, comes sprinting in from the sidelines to bring in the play. And this may be the run around until you run out the clock play. Run the clock. They're winding the clock now. And that may be it. Good strategy. Don't even have to run around there. Wound the clock. Started it up. And your final is 48 to 7. Our player of the game, Imani Cross, who did all sorts of stuff on offense and defense. You saw him stave off that scoring drive by intercepting something in the end zone. Gina will be down on the field with him and the victorious coach, Bob Christmas, in just a few moments. Your final, North Hall 48, Chester T7, the Hall County Sports TV Game of the Week. If you're tired of paying high prices, go on down and visit the good folks at Dave's Goodie Barn. The buyers for the store travel the globe, searching for the greatest deals so the savings can be passed along to you. They purchase from insurance companies due to fires, floods, and other natural disasters. Most of this merchandise is in near perfect condition. So if you're tired of paying high prices, hurry on down to Dave's Goody Barn or visit their website at davesgoodybarn.com. What's there today may be gone tomorrow. This program is also brought to you by Long Street Cafe, now with two locations in Gainesville, 1043 Riverside Terrace and 405 Pearl Nicks Parkway. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Long Street's got the reputation for Gainesville's fastest drive through and the best fried chicken you'll ever sink your teeth into, plus veggies, a full salad bar, and great desserts. Check today's menu at www.longstreetcafe.com. Call a friend and meet them for a hearty meal at Long Street Cafe, where they put the home in the cooking. Sports action, weddings, corporate training films, grand openings, aerial videography, corporate employee safety films, real estate, installation, music videos, scripts, satellite uplinks, and corporate television commercials are just a few of the services our company offers from planning to final project. We're a full-service production company. If you want it on film, there's only one company to call. North Georgia Productions, a full-service production company with one-on-one -on -one editing capabilities for our clients. Call 770-297-0528 and let us mail you a demo of our work. That's 770-297-0528 or just send us email at northgaproductions at charter.net. Gary Glenn, William Howington back at the Brickyard. Happy homecoming for the North Hall Trojans tonight. 48-7 to the final over the rival Chester T. War Eagles. Big sub-region win for the Trojans to get things started off in the sub-region. 
They've now won two in a row after losing their first three, and it was mostly on the back of Imani Cross, who had three touchdowns in the first half, a 38-yard, an 85-yard, and a 45-yard. And then in the second half, uh, Caleb Faulkner came on. Faulkner had also scored in the first half. He scored in the second half. He scored in the first half on a seven-yard run. He scored in the second half on a six-yard run. He also scored on a pass from Bradley Brown for to Caleb Faulkner, five-yard pass there. Brown also had hit Eli Gilmer with a 25-yard pass. And the only score for the Chester T. Warriors as far as touchdowns is concerned, Quan Clark, a 68-yard scamper. Heron was good on that one extra point. Modesto Cruz for North Hall was six out of seven on the PATs. The final score, 48 to seven. And Monty Cross with close to 300 yards rushing, and he is standing by now along with Bob Christmas with our Gina Gailey. All right, guys, a nice look at that scoreboard. I know that makes you happy tonight. This guy, a big reason for it, Imani Cross, our player of the game tonight. Three touchdowns, won an 85-yard run, 280 yards rushing, interception. I mean, I could go on and on. Well, this kid's a winner right here. And beyond that, he is as fine a young man as I've ever coached. And uh, high character, high values, and uh, great work ethic. And I'm just so proud of him as a person. And then for him to come out and have the kind of game he has tonight, I couldn't be happier. Well, offensive line, you got to give props to them, but a phenomenal game by you. Yes, like you said, the offensive line did a wonderful job all week. They had a great week of practice. Our coaches put them in a great situation to get better, and I think it showed tonight. What was going through you guys' minds at the halftime? Well, the coaches always preach us to never let up, and um, we wanted to come out and continue to play well. We wanted to stay focused, do our assignments, and I think we did an okay job of doing that. And Chesity played hard till the end. Yeah, they did, and and that's they've gotten behind on other people and have come back on them. And we told our kids about that and uh, that we cannot let up. And I saw a couple of lulls there, and of a our kids responded well. And uh, I think it shows a lot about the character of our football team. But, but like you said, Chesty never quits. And, uh, you know, they had a, an off night tonight, their quarterback out er, early in the game. And, uh, but they are a good football team, and they're well coached, and they're going to have a good season. Well, I know you're going to celebrate tonight, next week, looking ahead to White County. Yeah, absolutely. We'll celebrate and then uh, get ready for White County. And uh, anytime we play White County, just right across the county line there, it's, it's a knockdown drag out. And uh, so we'll be geared up for that. Got to go up there to play them. You got two wins behind you, motivated going into next week. Definitely. Um, I think we got a little bit of momentum. We're going to try to go into practice this next week and get better as a team. Well, congratulations, guys. Good luck next week. Thank you, Gene. appreciate it. Thank you. Back up to you, Gary. Okay, Gina, thank you very much. Officially, uh, we've been handed the North Hall official statistics. William, and what did Cross finish with? Uh, 280 yards on 16 carries. North Hall had 20 first downs, 47 rushes for 438 yards. And like I said, Cross, 280 yards. Faulkner had 120 on 20 carries. Christmas had 26 on five carries. Gilmer had one carry for negative one, and Brown had one carry for 11 yards. Cagle, one carry for seven yards. Bennett, one for negative one, and Hewitt, one for negative two. Passing, Brown was five of eight for 70 yards. Gilmer caught two for 28. Smith caught one for six. Faulkner caught two for 36. Russia for Chester T, they had seven first downs, 27 rushes for 91 yards. DeGraff had three carries before he got hurt for seven yards. Thompson had 10 for 24. Burgess, five for negative 12. Quan Clark had six for 79 in that long touchdown. Cagle had one for six. Passing, DeGraff was 0 for three. And Burgess was seven for 19 with two interceptions and 84 yards. So like I said, total domination there for the Trojans on the ground and really in the air too. Well, and we said, you know, when uh, Jordan DeGraff went down at the end of the first period, it was still pretty much North Hall's ball game right then. And I, I'm not so sure if he'd been able to finish the game if it, the outcome had been much different. Now, I think that maybe well, Chester might have a little score bit. a little bit better on the offense, but I think they, the final outcome as far as one loss is concerned would have been the same thing. I think so too. Well, in addition to the offensive statistics, Taylor Ryder led the North Hall defense with eight tackles total. Seven. Matt Pratt had seven. Dustin Bennett 
Andrew Smith. And Imani Cross also had five. So Cross on offense, 280 yards and three touchdowns. And on defense, William, five tackles and an interception. I'd say he had himself a pretty good night and he was our player Yes, of the he game. sure did. All right, so the North Hall Trojans will try to even their record at 500 next week when they go to play the White County Warriors. Chester T will host Stevens County for homecoming. The Warriors are coming in and to try to knock Chester T off at home, and, of course, the Warriors will try to defend their home turf on their homecoming night. I think that's what you said, William. It's homecoming at, at Chester T so. for Stevens County. Uh, we'll come in as a North Hall at White County. Chester T hosting Stevens County. We'll get it right there for you in a few minutes. And Chester T will go in in that one at 3-2 and two on the year. So the final once again, 48-7. North Hall is going to defeat Chester T on the North Hall homecoming this evening. For William Howington, Gina Gailey, and our entire crew, uh, Jimmy Giles and Tracy Giles, along with Alex Howington and Natalie Howington, as well as uh, Caitlin Giles, also in on things tonight. And once again, congratulations to homecoming queen Sarah Marchman, homecoming queen for the Trojans 2011. This is Gary Glenn. You've been watching the Hall County Sports Game of the Week. If you're tired of paying high prices, go on down and visit the good folks at Dave's Goody Barn. The buyers for the store travel the globe, searching for the greatest deals so the savings can be passed along to you. They purchase from insurance companies due to fires, floods, and other natural disasters. Most of this merchandise is in near perfect condition. So if you're tired of paying high prices, hurry on down to Dave's Goody Barn or visit their website at davesgoodybarn.com. What's there today may be gone tomorrow. Want to advertise on TV, but don't want to work with these guys or have a budget that's out of this world? North Georgia Video Productions has some of the best technical and creative talent to make your commercial with the best quality, on time, at affordable rates. Our production capabilities include multiple camera shoots with full range audio mixing and digital editing. So before you pay too much to these guys for a commercial for your business, check with North Georgia Video Productions. Best quality, on time, at affordable rates. 